There were many celebrities who loved the scarf, for example, Catherine Deneuve or Sophia Loren. And this design uh, became a very popular, very classic design for MS. The scarf looks symmetric, but when you pay attention to the detail, you will see that there's something off in the symmetry. Hi, my name is Liz. I'm a fashion art historian and the founder of the fashion label Pelagona. And on this channel, I'm telling you the stories behind fashion trends. There is an urban legend that every 20 seconds there's an MS scarf sold somewhere in the world. According to the current creative director of MS, French people grow up with the scarves. They see their mothers wear the scarves, how she takes care of them, how she cherishes them, and they are handed down. Whether this is true or not, the MS Carré has become something which is very sought after. It has been considered as a classic by many fashion experts. But what many people don't know is that since uh, its launch in 1937, there have been over 2000 different designs and Hermes has collaborated with over 150 artists from all over the world to create those carrés. So what I would like to do today is I would like to explore how this scarf came about. We are going back in fashion history and I would also like to share what is so special about these silk scarves. So let's start with the history of the house because I think this is a vital part of understanding the silk scarves. Uh, Hermès was founded in 1837 by Thierry Hermès and he was actually working in the equestrian business. He produced harnesses and other leather accessories and he used a special thread, a wax thread, and he made the products very durable and functional. The workshop was based uh, then in the 9th arrondissement in the then Rue Bas de Rampart and he supplied the French aristocracy. In 1878, his son Charles Emile took over and he expanded the product range by saddlery. And then, together with his sons Adolphe and Emile Maurice, uh, he also expanded regionally. Emile Maurice is a name to remember because he was vital also for the inspiration behind the silk scarves. They then renamed the brand and called it Hermès Frères to show brothers that it's a family business. And they move it to the now famous location uh, Faubourg Saint-Honoré number 24. And at this time already, the very first bag of MS was launched, the Haute Eau Courroie, which means high belt. It's also called HAC. Uh, and it was a bag where people could carry the saddle and other equestrian equipment. So still a very close connection to everything connected to horses, basically. It was also the start of the automobile and a lot of people who were fans of the automobile also enjoyed these very practical bags. I already mentioned Emile Maurice before. Until today, he's a very important figure in the whole family and brand history. He is still considered one of the true visionaries and innovators uh, for the business. And he also enjoyed traveling. This is the reason why he expanded the product range uh, and introduced travel accessories. On a trip to Canada, he saw the military cars and these cars could open and close their hoods with a technology which is today known as the zip or zipper. He brought the technology to Europe and he then created the first bolide bag, which is a bag uh, of the house of Hermès with a zip compartment. At the same time, Emile Maurice was also very crafty in building up this whole luxury myth around the brand because he collaborated with the right people. He had a yellow cowhide trunk made for Mr. Bugatti, who just created the first Bugatti Royale, and that trunk fit exactly into that car. So we can already tell how uh, clearly and how meticulously this whole luxury brand image was crafted, and the brand still benefits from it, and this is something that has been created over decades. Emile Maurice also introduced Introduced women's wear in the 1920s and this is also the time where the silk fuller now uh, becomes important for the company because he launches uh, the silk scarves uh, with a supplier from Lyon. At first they don't produce them themselves, uh, they work with a manufacturer called Bianchini Ferrier and Lyon for a century had been uh, the center or one of the major centers for silk production in Europe and Bianchini Ferrier was also very well known. They supplied many designers in Paris with their silk products. For example, the designer Paul Poiré was also among their clients. But very soon the brothers uh, were not really satisfied with the collaboration with Bianchini Ferrier and they decided to bring the silk production or the silk scarf production in-house. The silk scarf is not really a coincidental product for MS because, as I said before, their roots are in the equestrian business. And when we look at the jockeys at the time, they started to change their heavy outfits or garments that they had to wear previously for shirts that were made of the lighter silk twill. 
and they very often featured the colors of the families that they were associated with uh, or the coat of arms. So again, the silk scarf is not anything random. There's a reason how it came about. And also the material itself, silk, fit very well with the whole luxury approach of the business because for centuries silk was considered something very precious, something very expensive. There is a legend that it goes back to China that Empress Lei Tzu was sitting under a mulberry tree and she had a cup of tea. And then suddenly a cocoon fell into her cup and it unraveled and then she discovered the beauty of the material. She is also said to be the innovator of the silk loom. And also the Romans and the Greeks enjoyed the material. For example, the Greeks used it to dry their heads. And in the 12th century, the knights, when they went into battle, they very often got a silk handkerchief from the ladies to remember them or as a kind of like lucky charm. And like so many other products, the real boost came in the 17th and 18th century when products were traded in Asia at large scale. Uh, we even have, for example, Paisley in Scotland that started producing silk at the time and similar also Lyon started this. After World War I there was a big surplus in silk in Europe or in France and the French designers then made use of this and incorporated the material into their design. And then in the 1920s when Emile Maurice starts thinking about the silk scarf, it was also an overall fashion trend because remember we had the flapper girls, we had celebrities like Josephine Baker or Greta Garbo who wore scarves. Uh, very often they made a turban out of it with a brooch that it was fixed uh, in the front. Sometimes they wore it around the neck or as other hair accessories. So it was an overall feeling of the time. It was the right time for the silk scarf for MS. And even during the war, an accessory like the scarf became important again because you may remember the famous poster of the We Can Do It woman. And this woman wears a navy overall and then she flexes her muscle. And we also notice a small detail in her hair. It's a scarf in red with white polka dots uh, to keep the hair from falling into her face so that she can focus on work. Furthermore, during the war, uh, scarves were used to uh, send motivation to people or also to give pieces of advice for daily life. And then after the war, we have somebody very famous who discovered her love for the silk scarf and especially for the Carré Hermès. And this was no other than Queen Elizabeth II. I think it might also be related to her love for horses and Hermès's roots in the equestrian business. And throughout her life, uh, Queen Elizabeth was very often seen with Hermès foulards. You heard me mention the term Carré quite often now. What does this actually mean? Carré means square in French and this comes from the shape of the silk scarf of Hermès because the standard size is 90 times 90 centimeters. There are also smaller sizes like 40 times 40 or 60 times 60 and there are also limited edition sizes but the standard size is the 90 times 90. Now it's 1937 and the first scarf is created. How did this happen? We have Robert Dumas Hermès, who is the son-in-law of Émile Maurice. Émile Maurice had four daughters and at the time the business was handed over to the sons, so he was his choice. And initially Robert Dumas actually wanted to become an architect. He had a very strong artistic passion, but then he joined the business. Um, and he also liked ink drawings. He became the creative director of the silk scarves and he collaborated for this first design with Hugo Cricard, who was a French artist uh, from a Czech family who emigrated to Paris. And they took inspiration from Emile Maurice's private collection. This first scarf is based on a board game from the collection and it is called Jeux des Omnibus et des Dames Blanches. And Omnibus and Dame Blanche were two public transport companies that had kind of a rivalry. This is where the name comes about. And when we uh, look at that scarf in the center, we have the players of the board game and they are surrounded by horse-drawn carriages. The brains behind it were Dumas and Ricard and their collaboration went on for years. They also met two printers, uh, Arnaud and Gandhi, who then started collaborating with them on the prints. They assessed the foulards together, they assessed the prints together and they constantly improved them. This very first MS scarf uh, was made from Chinese silk, which was twice as strong as the traditional silk. And it was also the first silk scarf that was ever featured in a women's magazine. We know for MS this will not be the last uh, scarf which was then featured in a fashion magazine. There were many more to come. 
the Second World War also affected the House of Hermes and I found quite an interesting detail what happened during this time. Today we have these signature orange boxes with a brown ribbon and on the ribbon we have the white logo. Uh, this was actually a coincidence. Hermes used to have cream colored boxes, but during the war their supplier ran low in stock and he only had that orange color left. So Hermes took it and then today it's actually an iconic color and nobody would think that this was due to a coincidence. The logo came about in the 1950s and this horse-drawn carriage again goes back to Emile Maurice's private collection. He had a sketch in his office that was called Duc Atelier. Uh, by the French artist Alfred de Dreux. And um, this is the basis of the logo, this horse-drawn carriage. And this horse-drawn carriage is also an important symbol for the family overall, but also especially for Emile Maurice. Emile Maurice had an ex libris. An ex libris is something that you put into a book, a stamp, to show that the book is yours. His ex libris was his intertwined initials. And later on, uh, this horse-drawn carriage was added to the Ex Libris. And in 1948, the same people, Dumas and Grecard, who created the first scarf, they created another scarf design called Ex Libris. They used the initials, the horse-drawn carriages, and the initials are flanked by the attributes of the Greek god Hermes, the scepters. And the whole design is then also surrounded by horse-drawn carriages. And this design uh, became a very popular, very classic design for MS, and it has been reissued many, many times uh, by many different artists. And at the same time, in 1949, MS started adding ties to their product range. And this was another coincidence because they had a boutique in Cannes at the French Riviera, and uh, many men came into their store telling them that they would need a tie because they could not enter the casino without a tie. So Hermes was very crafty. They started producing these ties and sold them to these gentlemen who then could enjoy their evening at the casinos. We entered the 1950s and we could say this is the time for the silk scarf. As you may know, in 1947, Christian Dior started the new look and the scarf was a very important accessory. There were many celebrities who loved the scarf, also the MS scarf, for example, Catherine Deneuve or Sophia Loren. And this was also the time where Robert Dumas took over the business. And he was the brain behind many creations, many accessories. For example, the famous Kelly bag. And speaking of Grace Kelly, she was also a big fan of the Silk Fula, and there's quite a nice story. In 1959, she was uh, on the yard of Aristotle Onassis, and she just had been stung by a wasp and needed to support her arm. And she used a silk scarf by Hermes to support her arm. And even the design language of that scarf is very important because it's not a coincidence, it's meticulously planned again, I would assume, because this scarf design, again by Hugo Cricard, was inspired by the theme, Deo Juante, of the Grimaldis, and also it is based on their coat of arms. And another unofficial ambassador was Audrey Hepburn, who really liked uh, wearing silk scarves. She even wore one of the foulards for her second wedding in 1969. And now we have reached the 60s and the fashion icon of the time, Jackie Kennedy, also loved the foulards and she used them as hair accessories and she paired them with her signature shades. And the success story of the Hermes Carré goes on because also in the 1970s we have people like uh, Bianca Jagger, who wore the foulard and also flamboyant men. The Rolling Stones were seen in Hermes scarves. Personally, I find the 1980s very interesting because the silk scarf became an accessory for the working woman because the very strict suits were softened with uh, these scarves. Business-wise, it's a very important time for Hermes because Jean-Louis Dumas, the son of Robert, took over the business and he knew that they had to attract a new target audience, that they had to make the brand look younger. He had models pose in denim with the silk foulard. And this is kind of a new style for MS because previously they were very, very classic, very traditional. And this showed that Jean-Louis wanted to take the brand into the future. Jean-Louis, by the way, is also the creator of the Birkin bag. And then when we think about popular culture in the 1980s, Madonna helped a lot to popularize the silk scarf because she wore it in her hair and she paired the silk scarf with opulent gold jewelry. So a lot of young people were attracted to the silk scarf. And this trend continues in the 1990s because popular culture was a strong driver for fashion. We have rappers like Tupac who wore bandanas 
or think about the movie Clueless where Dion wears silk scarves and even in the classical music field we had Luciano Pavarotti who had a very big collection of Hermes scarves. He wore them around his neck for sure to protect his voice. And another important development for Hermes also comes from the arts because at the end of the 80s we had the Magicien de la Terre uh, in Paris. This was a contemporary art exhibition which brought artists from all over the world to Paris and it started the shift from the Eurocentric representation in the arts towards a broader representation. And of course, this is also reflected in the Hermes designs. And in 2005, with the Hermes editor edition, they emphasized again their strong links to the arts. The first edition was an homage to the artist Josef Albers, who was a painter and a lithographer. And he also taught at the Bauhaus and he was very well known for his colors. And for this edition, the design team had to push the technological boundaries they came up with a new method called edge-to-edge -edge printing which means that the colors didn't have the fine lines separating them uh, and still they don't blur so this was quite innovative the second edition was with Daniel Buren who is very famous for his large-scale installations and the third edition was with artist Hiroshi Sugimoto who had collected Polaroids over 10 years these Polaroids captured sun light colors and they served as inspiration for him. He took 20 of these Polaroids and they were then the basis for scarf designs. And even today the silk scarf is in fashion again. We have quite a few brands like Versace or Dior who have been issuing these scarves. So I do think uh, the scarf is something that will persist and we will see many interesting designs in the future. So let's leave history behind and focus on what makes these scarves so special and I will also tell you how you can authenticate the MS scarves. First of all, it's always the size. I already mentioned it before. It has to be a square and it has to be 90 times 90 centimeters. It can be 60 times 60 or 40 times 40 depending on the model. There are also limited editions but the standard size is the 90 times 90. So this is already a starting point. The weight has to be around 63 grams and then you can also look at the edges of the scarf because the MS scarves are rolled from the back to the front. Uh, they are rolled in and then uh, with a silk thread they are fixed with tiny stitches so that they stay in place. Another important feature of the scarf is of course the artwork itself. As I mentioned before, uh, Hermes has collaborated with over 150 artists and sometimes they signed the work. It may be the full name, it may be a short version, sometimes it's only initials. Some artists though have not signed their works, for example Hugo Cricard has not signed his works. So it doesn't mean if there's no signature of an artist that this uh, is not an authentic scarf, but it's an indicator. And similarly, Hermes may be written on the scarf, sometimes very obviously in a banner or very big as part of the design. Sometimes you have it very, very small and then it says Hermes and sometimes with the circle and C to show the copyright. And similar to the artist's signatures, these things are very often hidden in the designs. It's not very obvious. It sometimes takes quite a long time to find these signatures or these references to Hermes. And again, just because it doesn't say Hermes doesn't mean that it's not authentic, but this is one thing that you can pay attention to. And another recommendation I can give you is when you have the design in front of you laid out on the ground and you might even find the name of the design so you can then search online or you can also search online and find the original even if you don't know the name of the scarf. Uh, and then you can compare. Another very special characteristic of the scarves is the square combined with a circle design. This comes from painting. It's quite uh, common to use this in painting for the composition. And in general, uh, it's the attention to detail. At first sight, the scarves look like a coincidence or they just look nice, but there's nothing random or unplanned about them. Every single step is meticulously planned. And one other characteristic is that there is no real symmetry. At first sight, the scarf looks symmetric, but when you pay attention to the detail, you will see that there's something off in the symmetry. So on the one hand, we might have a flower and then the flower is mirrored symmetrically but it might be a different style of flower, it might be a different color, a figurine might look different, there might be different postures or gestures. So it's very much about the details that make these uh, scarves so special. What can we say about the themes? Naturally, because of the equestrian roots of the business, 
there are a lot of horses, uh, equestrian accessories and also for the first designs there were a lot of hunting scenes but we also have for example the regattas in Cannes by Cricard uh, or also French cuisine. And I would say looking across the history of the MS Silk Fula, the sky is the limit. There are so many different designs now. It also stems from the fact that the artists have different backgrounds and different motivations behind it. You see animals, flowers, uh, geometric shapes, abstract forms. There is a big variety in themes, I would say. And of course, there are some designs that have become classics. For example, the Prix de Gala by Cricard has been reissued and it's uh, a famous collector item now. And also, for example, the Three Musketeers, Les Trois Musketeers, which was started by Philippe Ledoux and then finished by Ribal. Uh, it is also a design that is very sought after. And this is the end of my video. I'm curious, do you have an MS scarf or are you planning on buying one? Do you have any questions that I could answer for you? Let me know in the comments below. I have also published an article on thepinklookbook.com so you can just head over and check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.